call to order this school committee meeting of the Saugus Public Schools, October 12, 2023. Dennis, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Can I have one of the kids start? Yeah, sure. One of you start the Pledge of Allegiance for us, please? Go ahead, Talia. Go ahead. So we're going to start tonight's meeting with a report of the school committee chair. Um, just want to kind of fill you in some things that uh, we're looking to do and that um, we'd like to happen. One is um, an after-school enrichment program. Um, we've got that on a warrant that's going to go to town hall um, and a town meeting to uh, take a look at. I think it's it's going to be after school. It's going to be at no cost, and it, it it's worthwhile. It's it's something that. Um, all the kids can benefit from. The other thing that we're looking at is to work on um, user fees as far as the fees that for both athletics, um, student activities, student activities um, that type of stuff, um, to make it more um, available to everyone. So when, when you look at it, it's not you have four kids and they're playing four sports things get expensive so what we want to do is lay it out so there's a one-time fee that's nominal and the kids can do whatever they want because what I think it'll do is if there's a kid playing a sport and he wants to do drama but he says it's gonna cost me X amount to do drama <clears throat> well there's one there's gonna be one across the board and, and we're gonna look at it that way so kids can get involved in things you know things that they might not think they have an interest in but they try it out and and they like it you know, so working on that, and then uh, lastly, always um, working on the SRO for the schools. Um, that's that's a big goal for us to get in place uh, sooner than later. So uh, those are one of the one of the things we're looking at. So that's just a, a quick update. The things we're doing as far as um, you know, putting putting the students and, and the kids first. I think. We, we work with the teachers on a new contract. We, um, we really want to make it in a, 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 a district that kids enjoy being here, that they stay here, right? Um, and that we have things to offer um, that make them want to stay. So um, pretty excited about the stuff we got coming up um, moving forward. So I will move on to the report of the acting superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just have a few announcements, and then I'll get to the uh, presentation by, Ms. by Dr. Lukey. Uh, the, first, the first announcement is I wanted to um, remind everybody, because we had a situation, I don't know, a week and a half ago, where there was a power outage in Saugus that took down all three schools at 6 o'clock in the morning. So uh, we were working as an administrative team to try to figure out what to do if the power didn't come back on in a timely fashion. So I did want to remind everybody and clarify that on the books right now for the Saugus Public Schools, we have a cancellation uh, procedure, uh, which is what we normally have if there's no school like a snow day. And that would be um, issued and sent out by a Blackboard Connect and, and put on the media sites. That one everybody's familiar with. We do also on the books have two other uh, procedures. One would be a delayed opening of two hours. Uh, so that would have been something that might have been uh, a possibility for that day. But I did want to remind the board and remind, and I will remind the community of that. If there's a two hour delay, that would just mean the start times are two hours later than they normally be. It would be if the weather was messy getting better or power's out and not going to be restored. Uh, before the start of the school day. And the other would be an unscheduled early closing if the weather was starting to deteriorate. Um, the, what, the closing, the, your unscheduled closing would be the same as our early release times during a, like a professional half day or on uh, the day before Thanksgiving and the, and the like. So I, I did want to throw those all out there 
just to clarify that they do exist and we would implement them if necessary. A um, couple other just reminders. Uh, the SBC Trivia Night is next Thursday at 6 o'clock at Kowloon's if anybody's interested in a team. Uh, they, can con they can reach out to me or any member of the SBC and get a team going for the Trivia Night. There's also uh, guests are allowed as well. Um, I think it's $300 for a team of five and 20 as a spectator and with it comes the food. Uh, right before that, we have our MCAS presentation, so they're just, you know, hyping that up a little bit if anybody's interested in watching. Uh, this week, uh, we actually had two things that I'm very proud of. One, we had a series of classroom visits set up by our curriculum uh, director, Ms. Turbin. Uh, we uh, adopted last, uh, la over the last couple of years, a new literacy program uh, from grades K to eight, uh, Wit and Wisdom. So we went in as a team and went into uh, a dozen classrooms throughout the district K to eight to uh, visit the classrooms and see what was going on. And it was really, um, the teachers were, and I'll use words like the chair does, the teachers did an amazing job. They've really taken towards uh, trying to implement this curriculum with fidelity. So it's nice to see that they have the curriculum, they have the program, they're implementing it, they're giving it a try. Uh, the students are working on it. I could see the similarities in the classrooms. You could see where what was happening in a third grade class was very similar thing was happening in a seventh grade class. So I think that is, is a step in the right direction as far as having highly qualified materials in front of the children for especially literacy and numeracy, English and math, which are huge areas of, of concern. So it was a very nice couple of days uh, going through those classrooms and seeing <clears throat> the students engaged in the classes, the teachers working on the curriculum, delivering the material, a lot of student-centered activities, so it was really nice to see. And the other nice event uh, on, a, on a different note would have been, um, I do want to recognize the girls' soccer team. They were recognized this past week by the Lynn Item as the team of the week. They're having a tremendous season. If I'm guessing, they're nine and two. Yeah, I mean, they, they, the nine they're and two. Eighteenth yeah. in the state, yeah. and they've got a game. They got a big game coming up Tuesday they, against Danvers. Okay, yeah, they're they're doing a tremendous job this year. I, I got a chance to see uh, their night game on Columbus Day, uh, and it was a good turnout of of people there, and it was a, it was a beautiful night to see it. Um, so I do want to congratulate them and Coach Coviello and all the players. Uh, for a great start to the season. Again, I'd like it to finish strong, and hopefully we will. But they look, the potential is there, so that's nice to hear. Um, so my last agenda item, without any further ado, is to uh, to call up Dr. Lukey so that she can present our Girls on the Run program. Well, Dr. Lukey's coming up. I just have a quick question sure. on the um, cancellation, two-hour yep. delay and early release. Is it possible maybe we can put out a survey to the parents, just because I think... When you start going into two-hour delays, mm -hmm. it might be it, it might be more beneficial just the cancellation. I think. Well, you know? I I can cer I can certainly throw that out as a survey to the parents to see if that's a. Uh, the only thing that would do is yeah, if it's no. a two-hour delay, we have to make up the day. Correct. We don't have to make up the day if it's a cancellation. Correct. We do. Correct. So I, I think you, know, I, you do weigh it, um, especially with with the past one where it was a power and it looked like. We were going to get the power back on 8, 8, 15. So it looked like if we had pulled the delay, it would be fine. Yeah, I think I'm but talking more weather. Related, absolutely. You know, so. All right. I, I, I can do that. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having us tonight here. Um, I'm the principal of the Belmonte STEAM Academy, and I'm here to introduce our, a new program um, that we put together over the summer, and it's called Girls on the Run. Um, as the new principal of the Belmonte Academy, um, one of my goals was really to promote strong leadership among our teachers. Um, and we have teachers here tonight that, as well as a parent that has stepped up and has really helped and supported our students here and really focusing on their social emotional well-being. Um, with this program, Girls on the Run is an international program and it really focuses on strong mind, strong body, good self-confidence. Um, I had received a phone call over the summer, one of my first days on the job, <laughs> and a woman who's the coordinator of the program 
um, had asked if I would be willing to get a program up and running. They had a parent, who our parent is here tonight, Miss Ingrid Torres, and um, had asked if I would be willing to to get this program up and running for the girls and um, really, you know, see if I could put it out to our teachers and kind of put together a program that was going to really help build this program for our girls and build their self-confidence. So our coaches that are here tonight, we have Lindsay Maza, who are our teachers here at the school, Marissa Huntington, you can step up there, and Amelia Krasik, and Lori Fossey. Um, so like I said, amazing support from these teachers, and then our parent coach, Ingrid Torres, as well. Um, their dedication and commitment has un been unbelievable in getting this go going, and like I said, I am very familiar with this program as I'm a former Division I um, athlete, collegiate athlete, and I believe strongly in really helping to build kids' self-confidence, and we're going to see things that happen in the classroom as well when you, they start to work building teamwork skills, self-confidence, and really just kind of feeling good and happy about coming to school every day as well. So I've seen the difference, and I, I really commend these coaches um, and our parent in helping these girls. Um, but it is a nonprofit organization, and it's designed to strengthen their social, emotional, physical, behavioral skills and helps them navigate life experiences. The program is a, has a curriculum, and these coaches have been presenting curriculum, social-emotional curriculum for the girls, um, and it's developing their competence, their confidence, connections with others, character, caring, and contribution in young girls through lessons that incorporate running and other physical activity. Um, so this is really a strong life skills curriculum. And it's really helping them begin to understand themselves, value that sense of teamwork, and then also just recognizing how we can shape the world, how we treat others, and really kindness. And I've seen it firsthand, and it's amazing. They, they come on Tuesday and Thursdays after school for 90 minutes. And this is all gearing up to a 5K run um, in Boston on November 14th. Um, so they really, again, um, we are hoping we're going to get our staff, teachers, anybody in the community willing to come and cheer them on because I know these girls can do it. Um, <laughs> um, but again, I, I can't thank enough um, all of the support. Um, and Mr. Hashem, I went to him in the summertime and asked if I could get this going, and he was beyond supportive and helping get this going as well. So, so I really, you know, want to want to thank. The, the teachers, the coaches, and everybody for helping to support to get this going. And we have the girls here tonight. I don't know if you guys can want to come stand up with your coaches and come on up to the front because they did take time in their busy schedules. Can I say something before we take a picture? Like, do you mind if we have a couple of girls that will explain a little yes. bit? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they that we have our coaches here that I'm going to hand it over to them and they're going to speak a little bit about what's been going on as well. Okay. Come on. Because you could all go around. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, we're just going to ask some basic questions, <coughs> and then whoever wants to volunteer can speak right into the microphone, okay? <laughs> okay, so the first question is, what is the most important thing that you have gotten out of the program? Do you want to do it That's it. You can take it right out of that. You can take it right out of that if you want. There right. you go. You got it. It's it's like about learning to like love yourself and stuff, and like always to be positive. Great. Anybody else? Nice job. Let's... It means like about how we like that we can like like we know who we are and like teach more about ourselves. Exactly. Good. Anybody else want to share? Next question. What is one thing that you guys really, really like about the program? How they put all their effort and hard work into teaching us how to control our emotions. Oh. That's great. <laughs> 
I like running. <laughs> Anybody else? One thing you really like about the program. I like when they teach us about our emotions and like um building up our stamina. Well, stamina, nice and confidence. You all are being confident. They push us to our limits. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more. <clears throat> I know it's special. <laughs> okay. One thing I like is that it's like a chance to make new friends and to enjoy your ability to run because some people can't and it's difficult. Good job. Nice. Yeah. Great job. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Just, if I may speak, just really quickly, um, as part of the coaching staff, you know, we're fourth and fifth grade teachers, so we have the fourth and fifth graders, and fortunately, Marissa and I have had some of these fourth graders, but being all together in this large building, we haven't gotten a chance to know all of these girls, and this is an awesome opportunity that I get to know some of the fifth graders even more from last year, get to know my fourth graders even more, um, and we're just so fortunate to have this program here at Belmonte and hoping to, over time, continue it and looking to even expand it. It is a program that runs um, from third grade up, so hoping that over time, once we have established this program, we can continue it because we're getting a lot out of it. We're getting just as much, if not more, as the girls. So it's been really great. So thank you. Is it? Thank you. <laughs> thank you nice job, girls. All right. So as, as you can see, the, <laughs> they're going back to their activities. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, we had an overwhelming response and we had to kind of cap it for this season. Um, but our hope is to continue to build and keep going. And, and like I said, these coaches have taken time to be trained and um, out of their own schedules and have really stepped up and done a, a fantastic job. So thank you. Dr. I just want to say thank you to you and, and you know you're doing a fantastic job we're, we're, we're so lucky to have you in our in our district and especially this building um it, it, your communication everything is just positive and and i'm just so happy to have you and the coaches and the teachers i, I say it all the time and um we, we're fortunate we have the best teachers i've ever been around and we have the, uh, you know our district is is lucky to have them and thank you guys for everything you guys do, You're both in the classroom and outside the classroom. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. I was just going to say, but I wanted the other little girls to hear too. But um, just to thank um, the teachers very much. I know that they have families, and as my daughter very often tells me, that Miss Maza has a very busy schedule at home with her <laughs> own family. Um, and I know that um, Miss Fossey stepped up and joined so that a, a specific number of students could join, more students could join, because we need a specific number of adults to um, be part of the team. So I just wanted to give a shout out to her for giving up, you know, another level of commitment to the Belmonte School um, than she already does. And also just to recognize that, you know, so many of these these participants are also athletes in other ways. You know, these students just ran off to cheer practice. So they're doing 90 minutes of this girls on the run and then they're doing another hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes of cheer. They're, you know, arriving at the Belmonte at 7.30 in the morning and they're being picked up at 7 p.m. by their parents. I mean, these are really long days and they're really committed. So. I just wanted to say behind the scenes, very often these girls are saying to me, it was girls on the run day, it was girls on the run day, and they have so many things to tell us, so they really are getting a lot out of it. So thank you so much for your commitment because, you know, many of these girls are often running around my house and they're like, girls on the run, girls on the run, girls on the run, let's do what we did, let's practice, let's do this, let's do that. And it's a really, it's a lot, it's, it's really been quite successful, so thank you for your commitment. Thank you. Anyone? Else? Thank you. No, ditto everything there. Thank, yeah. thank you, and yeah, thanks thank you. to the parents getting involved. It's great when <laughs> teachers and parents work together for the kids. So thank you, Ms. Torres, and all the teachers. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lucky. Moving on to old business, um, we're going to have the first read of the policy governing the use of the school facilities. Uh, Mr. Gould, would you like to? Well, it's, uh, you don't have to read the whole thing, but maybe just give us some highlights. <coughs> it's going to. It's on up on the web page. I'm yeah, assuming. If, if Mr. Hashem doesn't yep. mind, I wouldn't mind uh, having him just uh, summarize. Just give a quick overview of it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Please. All right, so um, we were tax, tasked with uh, trying to come up with a policy uh, governing the, the school use of the, of the facilities. Uh, we had an old policy or a policy that was very uh, confusing. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do is clean it up and make sure that the language was clear, um, that hopefully everybody can easily understand it. Um, and if that if that's an issue, that's something we should tweak again. So what I what I did is we met as policy subcommittee and uh, finance. finance subcommittee uh, to try to work this out and try to get a balance of what I think we wanted. So if you look at this policy, it's, it, it goes through exactly what it takes in order to uh, use the facilities and, and rent them, so to speak. There are, th there are four tiers of use. Uh, tier one would be Saugus Public School teams. That, that's what we already, all, already have and already use, and those school groups would take priority. They, they would be the first up. Then uh, Saugus Youth Programming run by the Town of Saugus or Alumni Associations or PTOs. They would be uh, only need to pay for any staffing needs that were out there. A tier three would be a, a Saugus-based nonprofit. And then the last one, Tier 4, would be a for-profit group with a Saugus address serving mostly Saugus citizens. And if you look at it on the next pages, it covers the cost by hours, additional hours. It, it lays out which spaces are involved. And on, on page 1, it also establishes what, uh, basically what's needed as far as staffing, that, and that kind of articulates what is generating the cost. <coughs> Thank you. So yes. that's on the website. So if anyone wants to go and review it, um, we'll consider this the first reading mm -hmm. and we'll move on to the second reading next meeting. Thank you. Next, we have approval of bills in the amount of $173,506.18. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, Chair seconds. Can we do a roll? Yes. 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 Uh, next, we have budget amendment number one. It's to allocate all contractual increases, amend applicable uh, service and good lines for cost increases, capture all turnover, and restore IT director position. Make a motion to approve. Chair seconds. Uh, okay. Does anyone have any questions? As you can see, the budget entry is extremely large. Um, the budget. Here we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so, as you can see, the budget entry, the budget amendment is very large. It was voted, the budget was voted in February. So, so much has happened since February. Um, the three bargaining units have gotten new contracts. We've had turnovers, as we usually do, over the summer, uh, restored the IT position. We've had a little bit of cost increases, as everybody's aware of. That's the economy right now. Nothing, um, nothing substantial, you know, just $50 here and there. And this also funds the sixth bus. So um, just want to remind everybody that we don't really take in a lot of user fee for the bus anymore. Um, because so many students are over two miles from their home um, when they get to school. <coughs> so the, the user fee doesn't apply, and um, the offset is very small, okay? But that's the budget entry in front of you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Do I have a motion? Oh, we made the motion and it was oh, seconded. So. Chair seconds. Um, roll. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Yes. 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 Uh, Serena. 
Can I just um, give you a little bit of news? Sure. Okay. I like news. So <laughs> the, the budget amendments really are probably the most boring part of school committee meetings. But I have a little bit of exciting news. For all of those who were with me back in um, FY21 at the end of the year, and we have leftover funding because of the yeah. thing called mm -hmm. the pandemic, and we put a PO aside for vans. So after two years of convincing the auditors that the van would finally arrive, it's in stock. <laughs> We're getting a new van in beautiful Sachem Red. So they're going to have to modify it for us. And um, stay tuned. I'll let you know when it arrives. So thank you for approving thank these you. budget amendments. Yeah. So moving on to the presentation of um, district improvement alignment with strategic <coughs> plan, mission, and vision. Yeah, okay. All right. In your, in everybody's in the packet, I, I, I put together a PowerPoint, but I thought it would be easier just to actually print it out and give it to you. Um, it's in the manila folder. Yep. So last, last year and over the last couple of years, the district worked on coming together and, and, and coming up with a strategic plan a five-year strategic plan, which at the end of the school year we, we accepted we're moving forward with it. Um, so this would be the first year of us rolling out that strategic plan. So, And I think I've said this to the committee before, uh, we wanted to target some specific areas uh, that match the, and we match the mission statement and the vision statement to go along with the strategic plan. So right now the three areas of focus for the 2000 23-2024 school year was supporting teachers through coaching and professional development to create uh, learning environments needed for effectively supporting all students, strengthening our communication and engagement efforts so that students, staff, parents, caregivers are seen, heard, and feel connected to the Saugus Public Schools, and providing all students with a standards aligned, consistently outstanding instruction and support learning, supportive learning environments. Those are the big three focus areas coming out of the strategic plan. So if you look at that, there was no reason to reinvent the wheel when I did a district improvement plan. We've gone years where the district improvement plan has been 45 pages. We've gone years where it's been one page and sort of everywhere in between. To me, it didn't make sense to reinvent the wheel considering that we put together over about a two-year period a new strategic plan for 23, uh, for 23 to 28. So what I just did is try to act, articulate for all of you on the first two pages. Um, I listed the, the district's mission and vision because I felt the need to, because I'm always <laughs> redundant when it comes to that kind of thing. I, what I just read to you are the specific focus areas coming off the strategic plan. And then what I did was I picked each of the three um, areas that we wanted to grow in and gave you the action steps that we're, we're taking and will be taking throughout the year to meet our goals and work towards our goals. So again, if you go through this and read this on your own time, these are the actions that we're currently taking. Like I said earlier, we're talking about trying to improve literacy scores and we've adopted uh, you know, a, a highly qualified instructional materials for K to eight with wit and wisdom. So not only are we giving the teachers that, providing them with a PD, we're going in the classrooms, giving them feedback, supporting them in any way we can. So that actually, if you look at just doing that project, that's standards alignment, that's providing professional development and support, and it's also communicating. Because the communication, I think, Everybody thinks of the communication as an email or my community newsletters and education updates that I give out every week. But it's also communicating with the teachers on what we want, making sure that we're there for them and let them know, you know, you're doing a good job, this is the right focus, or do you need a hand, we can help you here. So that's pretty much our <coughs> goal, and that's why everything's intertwined. So if you look at it and say, wow, the vision, the mission, the strategic plan, the district improvement plan, they all look the same. That's because we want, this is what we're trying to do. And to try to say that things don't fall into that plan, that gets problematic. That's where we, you know, we get a 40 page plan, it looks great on paper, you know, it's a nice bound document, but then 
when you're trying to implement it, it's too much. Nothing, you know, there's nothing that you end up accomplishing, or you accomplish one or two things anyway. So I think the best way of going about it is to pick some targets that will really give us the best impact for the students and the student learning, and that's what we did. So this, this right here is a district improvement plan, uh, the action steps. I'm presenting that to you now so that you see it and kind of give me the thumbs up, and then I will have the principals put together very similar school improvement man plans matching these ex same exact targets so that everybody's aligned with what we're trying to do. And, and we have principal meetings every week, so this is not a surprise to them. So when I, when I rolled this out to them at the beginning of the school year, they weren't surprised because it was exactly what the strategic plan was saying, the same thing the mission statement saying and the same thing the vision statement saying. So I just wanted to present this all to you. I gave you it all in one single package. So you have the district improvement plan for the year, the mission and the vision statement, you have the uh, the big ticket items for the um, strategic plan, and then the specific focus areas for this year. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I have a if you don't mind. Um, Mr. Chairman, this okay. is awesome. Mr. Um, Hashman, great job. Just one quick question. Sure, absolutely. During the planning and all the stuff of this, I know you're talking to principals quite often, yeah. but, but do we have a handful of teachers that might have kind of looked at it? Well. Well, with the strategic plan, because again, everything is coming off the strategic plan, and that, that they spent there was two. This that was done before I even stepped into the ring. Um, so all I did was run with it and use my leadership team to do it. So this has had the strategic plan itself, which is where we're getting all of the focus areas out of, yeah. had input from staff, I believe, uh, uh, families. You, yes. the, the the school committee did. So you all provided the feedback, and it was a, like the first, it, it was over the last two years, that all got processed and put forth in a nice, clear strategic plan. But again, that strategic plan can be big for five years. But I think the, the target areas, we sat down as an administrative team, uh, I believe last, at the end of the spring, before the school year ended, and said, look, we have this new strategic plan. Where are we going with it? So this is what everybody wants us to do, whether it's the town, the school committee, the teachers, the students, the parents, everybody. Let's pick our targets for the next year. So we did, and we kind of did like a blind poll, and these three areas really came out on top for everybody. So that's what we really embraced as a leadership team. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. So uh, moving on to the presentation of the elementary student handbook. Um, I think we all got that in our package. Yes, we did. I, did everyone have a chance <coughs> to look at it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I have Dr. Lukey here if there's any questions, but uh, uh, for full disclosure, um, she's come in and Dr. Lukey, her assistant uh, principal, uh, Taylor DePisa, uh, Mr. Mondello at the Vets, and Tom all worked on trying. What happened was... I looked at where the elementary handbook was, and it was kind of disjointed. It had a lot of materials from citing Waybright and Oakland Vale and Lyndhurst because it was still kind of that in flux. So what the four of them did is go to all of the source areas like the nurses, PPS director, curriculum director, all the places they had to go to make sure it was current, it was aligned, and they put this all together. So this handbook, and if you want to call Dr. Lukey up, it's really the handbook she inherited and cleaned up. And I thank her and Tom and Mike and Taylor. They did a great job where I just kind of said, look, when I was putting together, when we put together the handbook for the complex, I was ready to kind of go with this. And I looked at it. It was more than a little work. So they spent a, a bunch of hours. And I, I don't take any credit for that other than saying we got to get this done. And they, they took it and they gave you that document that you see in front of you that is ready to go for our students. And naturally, this is like all handbooks and all everything else, it's a work in progress. So if there's changes that need to be made, the nice thing about it is we live in an electronic age, so changes can be made on the fly. Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. Yep. Um, nothing in it that's... Did you get a copy? ...sticks out. Oh. <laughs> Do you need a copy? No. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the handbook. Chair seconds. Roll. 
Yes. 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 Mr. Chair, before you go on, can you just approve the dip to the district improvement plan? <laughs> Back, back. Okay, okay. Yeah, there, there was no, it uh, didn't so, say vote. I'm sorry, my bad. That was, that's okay. on me. That's okay. <clears throat> so, we have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the district's improvement plan. Improvement plan. Chair seconds. Uh, roll. Yes. 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 So next Thank we you. have uh, Saugus High School Students in Action Group presentation. They, they've actually, they tapped out. They, they're not, they're not, they weren't ready to go, but it, 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 the meeting had already been posted. So I think they're going to be at the next one. Okay, okay excellent. Uh, excellent. Um, presentation of out-of-state field trip. Um, Saugus High School Sports Management field trip to New York City. Good evening, Brennan Sullivan, principal of Saugus Middle High School. So if you've been on the committee, um, if you were on the committee prior to the pandemic, this was a trip that was done um, for several years prior to the pandemic. Obviously, when everything else shut down, this trip um, was stopped. But now uh, the teacher, Jessica Lucier, one of our health and wellness teachers at Saugus High School, and she teaches a sports management class. Now that, you know, the world is pretty much open back up again. Things can be done as normal. Uh, she'd like to do the trip once again. Um, I shared the um, field trip. It's a pretty quick trip. Uh, they leave on Friday morning, 6.30 in the morning. In December, they take a bus down to St. John's University. Uh, they have the opportunity when they're there, they go to the university. They meet people, specifically people working in the athletic and sports management department. They have an opportunity to do a little bit of sightseeing in New York City. They see the 9-11 Memorial, uh, but much of it revolves directly around sports management and the college. So they go to a um, St. John's, I think this year it's a men's basketball game. They also usually get a tour at Madison Square Garden. They meet people involved there. Um, and then the next day they do a little bit more in the city, and they head back in their home, hopefully by about 8 o'clock at night on uh, Saturday. So it's one night, it's a whirlwind tour, but they are high school students, mostly upperclassmen. Um, it's a wonderful experience. Ms. Lucere is an alumni um, of St. John's University. She has a lot of connections there. She's a, uh, she was a collegiate athlete for St. John's. Um, it really, it fits in with our mission of trying to promote, um, you know, college readiness for all our students, because this is, you know, this is a very well-known, well-respected university, but it's a little bit outside of the zone that a lot of our students might think to look at. So, you know, guidance has noted that in the few years that we haven't done the trip, interest in St. John's has gone down a little bit. I expect next year, Assuming this trip gets approved, when they come in, applications will go back up. But it really, it um, teacher knows what she's doing. She's done it a number of times. Students love it. I fully support it, and I would uh, greatly appreciate it if you'd approve it. My son went on this. It's fantastic. They actually, they're at Madison Square Garden. They're at the um, the, the room where they the, the media room, mm -hmm. and they sit up there. It's yeah. it's it it worthwhile trip. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's it, it's fantastic. The pictures they come back with and, you know, the New York City stuff, they, yeah. it, it's great. So I'm, I, I applaud you guys for doing this. It's great. Motion to approve. Uh, okay, cheers. Just one question. For go ahead. Um, the criteria for the students to qualify to go on the trip, is it a lottery? Is it? The no, the, it's the students in the class. In the class. So the students, if you look on there, in, they take, uh, the teacher teaches a sports management class. So it's open to the students in that class. If a student doesn't go, it doesn't harm their grade, obviously. Um, they get an alternate assignment for the, the one day they miss. But it's for the students in that class. Um, and so the students all, it's an elective class, so they all have an interest in this field, um, in the study. And they, you know, teachers able to reinforce what the expectations, what they should expect out of it. And then, um, you know, it, it connects to everything that they're talking about in the class. Thank you. You, you had the motion. 
I made the you seconded. Right? Yeah, second. Um, roll. Yes. 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 <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Um, that's signed. Thank you. <clears throat> Presentation of out of state field trip, eighth grade, New York City. Hi, good evening. Myra Monto, associate principal. I'm here to seek approval for the eighth grade end of the year trip to New York overseen by Capital Tours. This summer, I had requested two itineraries from them, one for Washington, D.C., and the other for New York City. Um, I then sent them both out to the eighth grade families with a voting form. I put it back into their hands. Um, and the results were 35 for New York and 31 for Washington. So the cost of the trip to New York is $949, and that's before fundraising. And that is per 45 students per a bus. Um, and upon this approval, we have a date of departure of June 3rd, returning the evening of June 5th. <coughs> and they're full days. Um, when I met with the owner of Capital Tours to go over the proposed itinerary, we discussed the hotel, security, and the buses. Some of the highlights um, on the New York City itinerary range from the American Museum of Natural History, Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Empire State Building, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Rockefeller's Plaza, NBC Studios, a Broadway show that will be announced, the Statue of Liberty and the Ferry Over, and the 9-11 Memorial. Wow. So it's, it's a pretty packed three days of um, pretty <laughs> <Yeah>. incredible <laughs> sights to be seen. Um, the hotel that we'll be staying at will be the Hilton Hasbrook Heights in New Jersey. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and as in past trips, we will have security on the floors that our students are on. The chaperones are the, the teachers and staff, um, and they usually flank the ends of the hallways, and um, security is hired, and they are on the floors from 10 p.m. because we roll in pretty late. Um, we keep the kids going all day and all night, and then um, they hopefully sleep, and um, they'll be there until 5.30 in the morning. All eighth graders are invited to come along um, as long as they um, qualify academically and behaviorally, and there's a lot of criteria that goes into that. We would never, um, due to funding, um, disqualify anyone, and actually there's um, a, a subdivision of the PTO, an eighth grade um, subdivision um, that's currently started up, um, and they are going to um, help defray the cost of the trip. So they currently have a point set of fundraiser coming up, and we will share that information. Um, upon approval of this, I will have a parent meeting, and I'll have Capital Tours come in and speak to the parents about the logistics of it. Um, I know that there's um, insurance that goes along with the trip. In case something happens, they can purchase that. So Capital Tours sends a lot of information along to the parents, to the families. No money comes to the school. It goes directly to the tours. There, are, um, there will be um, two tour guides for each of the buses that go along, and they're, they're wonderful. So um, I am here seeking approval. Excellent. I, I just want to first commend you. I know it's a lot of work and, um, to do stuff like this. And I, you know what? I really appreciate that you sent it out to the parents because you're the one who hears it. Yep. <laughs> so um, it, was, it was nice, and I appreciate it, and we, I think we all do. Yeah. I, I, I don't think some people understand the time that it takes to do these field trips, whether it's a day field trip or, or you know, you go into New York City for days or you go into um, St. John's. It's a lot of work, and, and I, for one, and I think I speak for all of us, we, we truly appreciate it. So, um, you know, I, it, it, once again, it's, it's great for the eighth graders, and I'm happy about it. Any questions? Sounds like uh, an awesome no. trip. Sounds great. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you for everything. It sounds like I was getting tired <laughs> listening to everywhere they're going to go. They're going to have a great time. Yeah. yeah. Just You're for welcome. transparency, it's like I do have an eighth grader in, in my house, so I don't know if I should vote or not. I don't think that um, it's a problem. I don't think it's a problem. No. Okay, very good. I don't yeah. think it's a problem. Okay. I do too. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? It's funny you say that, but I think I voted on it when back in 2015 when my son was going to St. Yeah. John's. Thing. So, okay. yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't, okay. um, 
I'll, I'll make, make a motion, motion to approve. Oh, Thank Dennis. you, Dennis. Uh, Chair Seconds. Well. Yes. 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 Once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be sharing this with the eighth graders tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, we have a presentation in the Saugus Middle High School um, Complex Ski and Snowboard Club. Hello. Um, so, once again, we're seeking approval to continue our Ski and Snowboard Club. Uh, we've been doing it for quite some time. We brought it back last year. I am very thankful. I have a parent, Jill Azur, who is doing all the legwork organizing this. Um, Wynn has once again generously um, contributed to the buses. So they are going to cover most of the cost of the buses. The bus costs are going up a little bit, so um, there may be a little bit of additional costs we have to cover. Uh, we're once again, going out of state to Pat's Peak. Um, but it is well worth the extra couple of miles for the skiing that we get in. Uh, it's five Mondays, uh, January, January 8th, January 22nd, January 29th, February 5th, February 12th, um, and a makeup day on the 19th if we need it. Um, I know the, you know, the students, we had a, two bus loads last year, uh, middle school and high school. Um, we're reaching out, getting, lining up our staff volunteers to go chaperone. I'm not going to lie, I go and chaperone these. Um, I went, I think, at least three times last year. Um, it is a great time. Kids love it. I have students who participate who have been skiing since they were, you know, high enough to stand. And I had seniors last year who'd never skied before, who signed up for it, took the lessons. Um, and I talked to some of them, and they were, you know, they were going to schools near ski mountains, and they wanted to learn how to ski in case that's what the kids at the school did. So it's a great activity. Um, it's always well organized and well run, and I would appreciate um, your approval. Yeah, I think we all, when we were in school, we went on ski trips. They, they were worthwhile, great memories, and, you know, you remember the days. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> my... Uh... My two children uh, were involved when this was at the very beginning. Uh, they both uh, took uh, advantage of this. It's a great opportunity. I uh, really encourage the parents um, to look into this for their children. It's an amazing time, well run. I actually, at one point, chaperoned a trip myself. Uh, it's, a, it's great to see the kids have an enjoyable time and the camaraderie that they build just with this group outside of their regular friends is awesome. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, request. Uh, Chair Seconds. Um, uh, roll. Yes. 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 <clears throat> yes. Can you let um, the parent, um, Jill? Jill. Yep. Let her know we thank her very much. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I was going to say, she's everywhere. Yeah. She volunteers her time for a lot yeah. of things. No, she, she's great, and she, you know, she organized, organized it last year, emailed over the summer asking if we wanted to do it again. I said, of course. She got right on it, and, um, she, you know, she even put together the flyer and everything. So she's wonderful, and she's really um, just a great part of the school Absolutely. community. So. That's I will cool. pass that along and thank you. And if Mr. Hatch or anyone else, you want to come and chaperone White one night, <laughs> give us a call. We'll get you on the bus. Excellent. Um, next, we have the approval of September 21st, 2012. Oh, it's 12. 12. <laughs> I'm assuming I, it's 23. 2023 <laughs> minutes. Did I do that? No. No. It was, no, no. No, it was, it was the You're Wayback good. Machine. Um, <laughs> Do you have a motion? Motion to approve, Mr. Chair. Chair seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Um, oh, that's okay. Do you guys, do you need to get to say something? Sue, do you need to say anything? Sure. Um, acceptance of the donation yeah, of Chromebooks. Mr. Chair, table that one for now because okay. we don't have all the paperwork on it. All right. Um, the other, it, do we have to approve these, but I know, um, 
uh, great news about these grants? Yeah. Do uh, we have to approve them? So wanna, do we have to approve the grants? Oh, okay. You want to just make a quick statement? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's okay to talk. Now it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. For <laughs> I think it should be a brag. <laughs> right. No, this goes. It really goes along with the um, priorities that Mr. Hashem outlined earlier. So it's one thing to bring in the curriculum, but it really is a three to five year rollout where we need to be committed to making sure that. We provide professional development, we do walkthroughs, we give feedback, and really um, give credit where credit is due to the, to the staff. I mean, the kids and the staff are really, uh, from K to eight, uh, we're seeing such progress, such engagement from um, both staff and students. So this grant just um, helps continue that progress. Like I said, it's a three to five year rollout to really get it solidified. So we want to make sure that it's not something that just goes away and sits on a shelf, but that it's done well for students. Well, uh, I for one, thank you very much. I know okay. it's, it, I know what it takes to get a grant. It's, it's a lot easy. of work. And we we appreciate it. We know what you guys do in in the administration, um, the day to day stuff. Plus this, it's a lot of work. So thank you very much. Anyone? Uh, absolutely. Ditto. Thank you for everything you do. I like to say that about once a week, and I haven't seen you for a couple of weeks. So. <laughs> thank you. So um, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Chair second. So in favor. Aye. 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 Um, we have another grant here. Um, for uh, it's a SEL and mental health grant for ninety thousand. So, um, do we have? We don't have to accept this. This one's just a grant, right? For, you you should accept it. I okay. mean, I know I we didn't get it on the agenda in yeah. time, but I mean, but you know, once again, yeah. um, this these are grants our district's getting, mm -hmm. which means there's another district that's not getting it. So, once again, you know, it, it, sorry for them, but thanks mm -hmm. to you guys for for bringing this mm -hmm. to us. So. Um, the motion would be to accept um, the SEL mental health grant in the amount of eighty nine thousand three hundred and fifteen. I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, chair second. So all in favor. Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, thank you. And, thank you. And I do. I when I spoke earlier about us in my report <coughs> about doing the the visits to the classrooms, yeah. I do. I, I have to credit uh, Miss Turbin and. Miss Trainer and Miss Andrews with with Miss Andrews wasn't part of the classroom visits, but with dealing with the budgets and dealing with the monies and the fundings and the grants and everything else to make it possible, you know that's you're only as good as the team that you surround yourself with. Amen. And I have an excellent team that I couldn't be more proud of. So I do want to acknowledge that while I said that we did the visit. <laughs> You know, and I was fortunate enough to be part of that. Uh, Susan arranged the whole thing to happen, so I do want to give her credit here. And, and Dawn participated in it to give a, her vision on what we should see. Because it's, e you know, it's easy um, to overlook certain aspects of the curriculum when you see it there. So I just, I couldn't be more proud of my team, and I did want to acknowledge them here tonight. Excellent. And, and that kind of brings me to something that reminds me that I like to kind of give a... a um, you know, a thanks to um, the clerks, right? I think it's it's one of those positions that, like, when I go in the school and I see them, they're always right. They got they're juggling fifteen things. They got seven seventy five things going on, and yet they're keeping things moving in the school. So I, I'd really like to thank the clerks um, also too. And and um, next we have public comment. As always, it's. It's. Why is Bill waving at I don't us? know. Do you want public comment? Uh, <laughs> moving on to public comment, just to keep keep in mind that it needs to be on the agenda to discuss it. Bill Palmarini, SCA president. Um, first of all, I want to. Apologize. I know it's not on the agenda, but my glucose alarm is going off every two minutes because there's something with the camera system or something, it makes okay. my alarm go off. I apologize <laughs> for all the beats you've been hearing. I tried to silence it. It will not silence because it has to tell me, apparently. So it's just not getting the signal. Um, I just want to say, I know you approved the, the handbook, 
the um, student handbook for the elementary. I'm having the same issue I did with the high school one uh, that we didn't receive any anything for it. Now, I know there was some confusion because um, it was handed over from one principal to another, but SEA didn't get any, we didn't get it. Okay. So if you could share that, I'm yeah, sure it's absolutely. fine. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine, but we didn't get it. And usually we get it prior to the approval. Sure. No, so that's uh, we'll, why Mr. Gould saw me looking like, uh oh, here we go again. No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll get <coughs> that to you. If yes, you can please. And I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's perfect. Yeah, right. and if not, it, we'll, we'll, we can go back to it. So. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Yeah, Chair, I apologize for that if, if it slipped through the cracks. And no, yeah, no, and it's because again, of that. Again, I'll sit down with Mr. Palmarini if there are yeah. any questions he has. Yeah, or no, concerns because no, no, that's yeah. not the intent. It was no, we, no, no. we didn't I know really that, change so. anything fundamentally unless it needed to be changed because it was outdated. So right. I mean that's you yeah. know, yeah, and, no, it, it, and that's what I knew that was the yeah. intent. Yeah. So that's no, why. No, so, but I just I wanted to make no, you aware that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. But thank you, and I apologize for my alarm. Let me know if you need juice. As long as you're okay. Do we have anyone else? Mr. Chairman, yeah, I got a couple of things. Sure. Um, first, are we having a, we only have one more meeting before election. I have to take a look at that. I think so. We do have one next Mr. week, Mr. Chair. I think you have two. We, we have two. two. We have two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have the third. We have next week, and then we have the third. Okay. The second. Okay. I did want to mention that you know, on the banners, you know, we're still trying to pull this together for November twentieth, but because of a delay in funding. Um, we may not be able to do it November 20th. So I definitely wanted to have another meeting so I could notify people. I've had a lot of people starting to contact me that were on championship teams that want to attend, mm -hmm. which is great. But, you know, we don't want to have it without the banners, obviously. So uh, I will bring everybody up to date in the next meeting. Uh, the other comment or question I had was I see a lot of activity on the Thrive Act um, and people trying to, uh, there's a there's a act in Congress to stop the MCAS as the graduating criteria for Massachusetts. And we haven't got anything on that, correct? Other than the same thing the public has same heard. thing. Okay. Sorry, Mr. All right, thank you. So I guess we could probably follow up with our reps on that too. Mm -hmm. that, that might be something we could do. And I think as far as looking at the uh, banners, I don't. Um, I'll touch base with people I have to touch base with tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we'll push it. I'll talk to you too yep, and see if absolutely. that comes once the mail comes. So, yeah, and we can Mr. Get Chair, that I did up. already meet with the high school principal about that. Yep. And, and, you know, we're going to do everything we can, but the logistics that it would take is probably not going to happen in time. But we, I, I just like to prepare everybody for that. Right. Uh, but we, again, we want to do it right. And I don't want to, you know, we're not going to have a ceremony. Right. And say, well, this would be great. You know, we can draw your pictures. Yeah. What it would Picture look like. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so that's you know that's what we're working on. So I appreciate that. Thank you. That's we'll work, we'll work together on that as we do I on most it. things. So we'll be good. Is there anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yes, I can. So, David. Aye. Aye. Aye.